Warm welcome to you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glad you're here. We rise for the opening versicles of Matins. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great a great king above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hands. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship Him. We sing together our psalm for this week, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we sing together our hymn for this week, hymn 633.
reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And we confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our Learn by Heart this week, our scripture, John Chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And the office of the keys, the first question, what is the office of the keys? The office of the keys is that special authority that Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. How can a pastor speak for Jesus and say, I forgive you all your sins? Well, the office of the keys tells us how. As we're learning this week, Jesus gave this authority to his church on earth to forgive sins. Jesus wants the forgiveness of sins to fill the world. And can you imagine if it did? How great this world would be instead of fights, instead of holding grudges, instead of blaming each other. We all forgave each other. That would be amazing. We heard of this in the scripture we heard today. Jesus wants us to forgive each other. If someone sins against you, Jesus says, try to forgive. Go talk to him and work for repentance and forgiveness, just the two of you. If that doesn't work, don't give up. Try again with one or two other people. And if even that doesn't work, still don't give up. Get the whole church involved if you have to. Keep trying to bring her to repentance so there can be forgiveness. Even the final step Jesus mentions to treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector is that in taking such a drastic step, they might repent. Everything is so that there would be repentance and forgiveness confession, and absolution. And this goes for you too. If you sinned against someone and they come to you with it, repent 
and hear those wonderful words from them, I forgive you. And while Jesus wants us all to forgive one another, pastors have a special responsibility as Christ's representatives, his ambassador in that place. He is the one specially designated to speak on his behalf. Another way to say that is that pastors use the keys that Christ has given to his church on earth on behalf of Jesus and the whole church. And it is called the office of the keys because a key does two things. It can lock a door or open a door. And forgiveness is the key that either opens or closes heaven. If our sins are forgiven, heaven is open to us. If our sins are not forgiven, heaven is closed to us. That's why Jesus wants forgiveness to fill the world. He wants everyone to be saved. He died for all sins. So he wants that forgiveness given to all. So when a pastor stands before his flock and says, I forgive you all your sins, he is saying exactly what Jesus wants him to say on his behalf. And when you tell someone, I forgive you, you are saying exactly what Jesus wants you to say. And when you confess and repent to someone you've wronged or hurt, you are giving them the opportunity to say exactly what Jesus wants them to say. That the whole world be filled with forgiveness. Imagine a world like that. How great that would be. We continue with the prayers beginning with the Kyrie. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And this week we pray for Eva and Trinity and their parents. Heavenly Father, thank you for Eva, Trinity, and their parents. Bless their family with forgiveness and love. Watch over and protect them in all their ways. Help them to learn and help their parents to teach them. Especially help them all to grow in your word and in faith and in knowledge of you and your love. And give them joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. And we pray in thanksgiving to God for the gift of our family and for those families that are broken and hurting for God's health and strength. Heavenly Father, thank you for my family. 
Help me love and forgive them always. And help those families which are broken or hurting. Give them healing and provide all you know they need. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, thank you for coming, everybody. The Lord be with you. Have a great day. Remember, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And I'll see you on Thursday.